Good morning and welcome to you on this Friday the 16th of April 2021. My name's Reverend Jo Richards and I'm Rector here in Canterbury of St Dunstan, St Mildred's and St Peter's. And today we've been asked to remember Isabella Gilmore, who was a deaconess. So just a little bit about her. She was born in 1842, the sister of William Morris and was a nurse at Guy's Hospital in London and in 1886 was asked by Bishop Thurford of Rochester to pioneer deaconess work in his diocese. The bishop overcame her initial reluctance and together they planned for an order of deaconesses along the same lines as the ordained ministry. She was made a deaconess in 1887 and a training house developed on Northside Clapham Common later to be called Gilmore House in her memory. Isabella herself retired in 1906 and during her 19 years of service, she trained head deaconesses for at least seven other dioceses. At her memorial service, Dr. Randall Davidson predicted that some days those who know best will be able to trace much of the origin and root of the revival of the Deaconess Order to the life, work, example and words of Isabella Gilmore. She died on this day in 1923. And so we remember her today and the work that she did those years ago. So as we gather together, O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from e Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our appointed psalm for today is Psalm 57. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until the storm of destruction has passed by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me and rebuke those that would trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions, people whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and your glory above all the earth. They have laid a net for my feet, my soul is pressed down. They have dug a pit before me and will fall into it themselves. 
My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake, my soul, awake, harp and lyre, that I may awaken the dawn. I will give you thanks, O God, among the peoples. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is as high as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory above all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is continuation from the book of Deuteron Deuteronomy, and it's chapter 4, and it's verses 15 to 31. Since you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you at Herob out of the fire, take care and watch yourselves closely so that you do not act corruptly by making an idol for yourselves in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any animal that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the air, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the water under the air. And when you look up to the heavens and see the sun, the moon and the stars, all the host of heaven, do not be led astray and bow down to them and serve them, things that the Lord your God has allotted to all the peoples everywhere under heaven. But the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron smelter, out of Egypt, to become a people of his very own possession, as you are now. The Lord was angry with me because of you, and he vowed that I should not cross the Jordan, and that I should not enter the good land that the Lord your God is giving for your possession. For I am going to die in the land without crossing over the Jordan, but you are going to cross over to take possession of that good land. So be careful not to forget the covenant that the Lord your God made with you, and not to make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything that Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a devouring fire, a jealous God. When you have had children and children's children and become complacent in the land, if you act corruptly by making an idol in the form of anything, thus doing what is evil in the sight of the Lord your God and provoking him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that you will soon utterly perish from the land that you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. You will not live long on it, but will be utterly but will be utterly destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples. Only a few of you will be left among the nations, where the Lord will lead you. There you will serve other gods made by human hands, objects of wood and stone that neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. From there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you search after him with all your heart and soul. In your distress, when all things have happened to you in time to come, you will return to the Lord your God and heed him. Because the Lord your God is a merciful God, he will neither abandon you nor destroy you. He will not forget the covenant with your ancestors that he swore to them. And now for our canticle. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils the sea covered them, they sank as led in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed, and by your invincible strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. 
Our second reading is taken from John and it's chapter 21 and it's verses 15 to 19. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Let, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go down where, wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to them, follow me. And now for our responsory. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? And now for the Benedictus. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who's come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God sought our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our way, our feet, into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Let us pray. As we come together this morning, we pray for the day that lies ahead. We pray if we've got any meetings, conversations that we'll be having, Maybe that opportunity just to bump into somebody in the street and say hello. Or picking up the phone and saying, how are you? Whatever lies ahead, O oh Lord, we lift this day to you. Remaining ever mindful that all that we are and all that we do, you go before us and are with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue this day to pray for our Queen and the Royal Family particularly as they prepare for His Royal Highness Philip, Duke of Edinburgh's funeral tomorrow. We pray for all those who are organising that, those who are working behind the scenes. We pray for the Dean of Windsor and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, who between them will be taking the service. We pray for all those involved and particularly for our Queen, as she mourns the loss of her dear husband at this time. 
and we hold before you, O Lord, all those who are mourning the loss of loved ones at this time, particularly when it's still so difficult to perhaps attend a funeral or haven't had that opportunity for proper closure. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to this day to pray for our world. We pray for those places where there is conflict. We pray that your peace may reign there. Where there are places of famine, may there be food. Where there are places of drought, may there be rains. We pray particularly at this time for those places around the world that are really struggling with the virus. The folks of India, Brazil and Germany, places that are intensive care beds are running out. Remaining ever mindful that this is a global pandemic that affects each and every one of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for our church, as we've prayed for Justin, our Archbishop. We pray for Rose, our Bishop. We pray for Joe, our Archdeacon. And for all those lay and ordained who minister across our benefice, across our deanery, diocese and across the country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for all those who are struggling in body, mind or spirit, for those on our benefice prayer sheet, for those who this day have specifically asked for prayer. We hold them before you. Those known to us, particularly those who are in hospital at this time, recovering from surgery, for those who may be awaiting tests, diagnoses, for those who may be at home, the housebound, for those who may be bedbound. A moment of quiet, O oh Lord, we lift them to you this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we just give thanks for our beautiful creation, for the bird song that we can so often hear, for the flowers in our gardens and the buds on the tree, the blossom, all signs of that hope. Heavenly Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect for today. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may also always serve you in the pureness of living and truth, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and pray for, for this day and always. Amen. Thank you as ever for joining us this morning. It's always good to, to worship together, to receive your comments and please do join us if you can for night prayer at 6 um, otherwise, our services are on Sunday, um, in person are 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock at St Dunstan's, um, but both services are also live streamed and accessed on our website. Wherever you are, please do have a good day and if we don't see you Sunday, catch up again Monday morning for morning prayer then. Bye bye for now and God bless.